Just marvel at this beautiful, fully restored Battle of Britain class steam locomotive seen here on the Spa Valley Railway in Kent. This is how our scrapyard wreck will look when it is completed. However, it currently looks like this. But not for long. Welcome to the Railway Maniac special update on 34058, the Bullied Light Pacific named Sir Frederick Pyle. The first of many milestones of any restoration is the boiler lift. That is the big silver thing you can see there sitting on top of the wheels. In the way though is the cab that is wrapping around the firebox of the boiler. That has to come off first but before that we have to strengthen the cab because it is not very strong at all, there's not much left of it. So one job leads to another job, leads to another job and leads to another job. This is going to be a full restoration so we're going to strip it down to its bare bones, fix what's broken and then put it back together again. I think we could do this by lunchtime. Right said Fred, let's have a cup of tea. Right said Fred, have a cup of tea. Right said Fred, let's have a cup of tea from your very own Sir Frederick Pyle mug. You can buy these at the Friends of 34058 Sir Frederick Pyle Facebook page. We have two separate crews working away on the cab today. We have Mike, Paul and Richard who are working away strengthening the cab with wood. While young Harry and his friend, you'll see any minutes, working away undoing the bolts that secure the cab to the loco. Wow. The annoying hammering sound here is from three sprightly fellas working away on our Merchant Navy class loco which is next to Sir Frederick Pyle here. There they are working away on Brocklebank line. <laughs> As you can see the cap has been lifted off the frames and placed on some wood. Now it is off the loco, we can have a decent look around it and I'm not sure if it's looking any better or any worse but it is looking pretty grim. That corner there is the fireman's side of the cab which is the right hand side, we see it's at the front. So you're getting a little bit closer, you'll then be able to see that the lower part of the cab is, well, gone. The framework here is hanging on by the skin of its teeth, so I'm not sure if we'll be, able, we'll be able to do much with that. The frame here for the fireman's side window looks intact. I'm not quite sure of the thickness of the metal there though. You can see the, uh, the wood strengthening job that we've done there. This is the other side of the cab, which is pretty similar. The bottom's rotted out. The driver's side front window is also in pretty good shape as well. That's the bottom of it there. A closer look now of where this cab did not escape the cutter's torch. The uh, top part of the roof was removed so the loco could get underneath a low bridge a good number of years ago. There is only one part of the cab's frame which is actually connecting one side to the other. And here it is. This is the back left hand side of the frame, goes up and over, that's the only hoop that crosses from one side of the cab to the other. 
otherwise we'd have two halves. Now the cab is off, let's remove some bolts and start getting ready to lift this boiler off. Just behind the rear driving axle here we have the uh, firebox boiler mount. And there's a clamp with two dome headed bolts. Would be four but we only have two installed. On the top here we have four nuts with the uh, studs through the center which actually hold on a pad and this pad is what the boiler actually uses to slide along the frames of the loco as it expands a quick look here up inside the firebox if we nip quickly around the other side this is the left hand side we have no clamp the loco arrived without the clamp so that's obviously been removed and not replaced so I'm not sure if we have that in stock or not there's a closer look at those nuts and the pad at the front of the loco which you can see here the black part is the smoke box that is sitting on top of uh, the saddle you can see a few bolts there some some have already been removed so we've got to remove all the ones that are left there we can get a better view of the front mounts on the boiler here which is on the right hand side of the loco we're gonna have a quick peep inside there see what we're working with It looks like we have four out of six bolts there to remove. But it looks like there's two types of bolts there, so that could be interesting. There's some more bolts there for the smoke box to saddle. And if we go around the front, climb up there, there's even more along the front to take off. While I was busy filming this, Simon Troy, our chairman, was busy working on those dome-headed bolts around on the rear boiler mount. So let's pop round there and give him a hand. Come on, you didn't think it was going to be that easy, did you, Simon? The nuts are off, the bolts are loose, and so is the bracket, but it won't lift off. We'll grab some pry bars and see if that makes any difference. We shall see if we can rock it from side to side and ease it off that way. This little job turned into a right palaver. It took us quite a while to get this off once we'd sussed out how to do it and find out what the actual cause was. The bracket would only move up a certain distance and then just stop. There was something stopping it, but we couldn't actually see what it was. Nothing. 
Simon didn't actually know I was recording this part of the job. His attention gets diverted to his phone while I carry on. It looks like I ran off for a cup of tea there, but I promise you I didn't. I swiftly return with some more tools. There seems to be no way that this bracket will come off with a bolt still in the top of it, so the bolts have to come out first. I then decided to bang the bolts back down so they are flat with the brackets again. I then sprayed the bolts with some lubrication as a lot of things work a lot better and feel nicer with some lubrication. With Simon still busy with his emails, I decided to get around to picking up the hammer and start beating the bolts again. This time a lot more successfully. And out it leaps. With the bracket off you can actually see the lip that was preventing the bracket from moving up any higher. Let me zoom in a bit there. And you can see it. This is Colin, he's busy working away on this front boiler mount on the right hand side of the loco. There's four bolts here and three of them are one size and one of them is another. Are they different sizes are they? There has been plenty of background noise in this video and that's due to the fact that we've got plenty of guys on site here today. Some of them working at the front of the loco, some of them at the back, some of them working on another loco, Brocklebank line, which is next to this one. They're busy grinding away with the grinders, cleaning the frames up. After removing these four bolts, Colin then moved on to the smoke box, slightly to his right hand side, and started removing the bolts there. There I am, give him a hand from the inside. That was definitely a two-man job undoing that nuts and bolt. After lunch, Simon resumes work with a new zest in his step. Having consumed the lion's share of the tea and biscuits, Roy and also Bob look on jealously, watching Simon's energetic endeavours. They're wondering where Simon has suddenly found this boundless amount of energy. While also wondering who ate all the chocolate digestives. Once Simon had loosened up all the nuts, it was Steve's turn to take over. And begin driving some wedges between the face of the cover and the cylinder block. A couple of bolts were also wound into the threaded parts of the cylinder cover to help push the covers off. Once loose, the fellas concocted this brilliant pulley system to lower this really heavy casting to the ground. You're holding it on that rope, aren't you? Yeah. I thought so. No, I'm not. That's all right, we got it. With the front cylinder covers off, we can take a peep inside to see the condition of these bores. You can see there the steam ports where the steam enters and leaves the cylinders. Well, the silver thing you'll see there in a second is the piston which slides backwards and forwards inside this cylinder ball. The bolts on the front of the smoke box, as you can see, have been taken off there. 
all the way along the saddle has been taken out. As we take a peep just behind the saddle there and underneath, the bolts there have been taken out as well. If we take a quick look underneath the loco, we can see how close these driving wheels that are right in front of you there are to the outside of the frames. It's only a few inches. You can also see some moss that has accumulated on the frames. We are now searching for the centre boiler mount. If we look underneath, there we are. Just about see there. That was really difficult to get at, and it's also really difficult to get at the other side of it. So we drop down underneath and have a look up there. We climb up through. See, there's a axle, driving axle. And just above that, there we are, the plate that holds the boiler. Once the boiler is lifted off, it will be craned over to this part of the line here and it will sit on top of these carefully prepared sleepers. Did you know you can buy your very own part of this locomotive? These desktop pencil holders are made from worn out parts that we can't use again so we've turned them into something you can use at home. You can buy them along with our fabulous robots from the Friends of 34058 Sir Frederick Pyle Facebook site. These awesome souvenirs are made from these. This rusty old pile of metal here are the superheater elements out of Sir Frederick Pyle's boiler. And as you can see they're past their best and they Definitely got a few holes there. More perforations than a Tatley tea bag. It's not just these tubes that we're using to make these components. We've also been using the nut and the bolt that we see there. We'll be cutting those up and making something out of those, which hopefully you'll see in a future video. Stop cutting it up, Alan. We're not scrapping it. It's all right. I'm just kidding. Alan there is just melting the heads off the rivets which secure the drag box to the frames. He is using a mixture of propane and oxygen to heat up the heads of the bolts. And then once they meet their melting point, they will then start to basically blow themselves apart. And you'll see loads of sparks coming off. Alan has now called on the services of his son, young Harry, who's going to be swinging the sledgehammer and knock out the remnants of these rivets. Alan's keeping well away, holding a pair of uh, long handle grips. That rivet is definitely moving, Harry, so keep swinging that hammer. That's it. Well done, fellas. Coming up in our next video, we hire a huge crane to lift the boiler. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and watch one of our other videos.